Hey guys, what's going on is Rick and I'm here with my July 2020 review part one. I want to mention before I forget, because I'm sure whenever I record part two, this month will be a little different with my reviews because parts two and three, no, part two will be two weeks because it was a week when I was away. So we only watched two movies that week. So I decided to lump weeks two and three together in the uh, video. So when I record that, it'll be two weeks worth of movies. And uh, so yeah, don't expect four videos this month. I'll still do surprise of the month and hot trash of the month. But as I've said before, you're going to see uh, movies watched quantity go down. I watched nine movies the first week of July, and I think we watched eight or nine movies the second and third week of July total. And so far in the last week of July, we've watched one. So today's July 26th when I'm recording. We're going to dive right in and talk about Scary Movie, the original Scary Movie. Uh, this one I always remembered being my quote-unquote favorite of the scary movies. I only own the first two because I don't think I enjoyed anything after number two. I've seen them all but wasn't a fan after two. Uh, but it's some, been something I wanted to revisit for a while. Um, like I said, I only own the first two movies. And this one is a parody film as they all are. But it focuses very much on 90s horror stuff like Scream, I Know What You Did Last Summer, um, The Blair Witch Project, all of which are the primary focus of this. <clears throat> the humor in this movie is very hit or miss, I will say that, especially some... When did this come out? I want to say this came out in 2000 or 2001. It doesn't say, of course, because it's a Disney title. Um, so I want to say this movie is about 20 years old. So some of the humor is very hit and miss. Uh, I will also say that Deputy Doofy is my favorite character. Probably not a character who would necessarily be in movies now. Um, and I love the nod to the usual suspects at the end of the movie. I'll leave it at that. I won't go into more details, even though this is almost 20 years old, if not 20 years old. But scary movie, rewatch that. And before we watched Scary Movie 2, we checked out Becky on Vudu. <clears throat> I think it was a cheap rental. I want to say it was like four or five bucks. Um, a movie totally off my radar until I saw a trailer for a film. Uh, some little girl with a hat with like ears, almost like Louise in Bob's Burgers. And uh, Joel McHale's her dad. And then all of a sudden there is uh, Kevin James. Hold on a second. There's Kevin James. Uh, with a shaved bald head and a giant swastika on the back. Kevin James is the bad guy in this movie. He plays a neo-Nazi. <clears throat> and uh, this movie is a revenge film uh, about a 13-year-old girl who's looking to defend her family. And uh, I will say this movie is very highly gory. I believe Becky was actually made to be released in drive-ins, which is kind of a bizarre thing considering what went on in the world and the fact that this movie could basically only be shown in drive-ins and on VOD. Um, the violence and gore in this film is the highlight of it. The story, like the first 35, 40 minutes, it's like, okay, like we need some, let's, let's ramp this up. Let's get it going. <clears throat> Although in that same time, I'll also say when Kevin James is on the screen, because he's never been the villain before and stuff, it had me intrigued every time he was on the screen. I was curious to see what was going to come out of his mouth, how he would play the villain, and he did a very good job of it. Um, but the movie, if you like violence and gore in your films, it's a movie I would recommend checking out. But it's not just, it's not a fantastic film. But it's, excuse me, it's highly watchable. I know in all, August, the end of August, it's getting a Blu-ray release. Would I add this to my collection? Possibly. Um, if, if I got it for like $5, I'd probably add it to a collection. Would I recommend it? Yes, I think there is a definite crowd for this. Uh, like I said, some of the gore and violence in the film is pretty crazy. And uh, yeah, Becky, two and a half out of five also. I don't know if I said scary movie is a two and a half out of five, but it is. So... Next up, I kind of teased this. The next thing we watched was Scary Movie 2. 
This is from 2001, which would mean Scary Movie is from either 99 or 2000. Um, this movie, as opposed to the first one, which parodied a lot of 90s horror, this parodies a lot of classic horror. Um, Poltergeist, The Exorcist, Amityville Horror, House on Haunted Hill, The Changeling, Legend of Hell House. But then on top of that, it almost counterbalanced that with a bunch of movies from 2000 and 2001 that it parodies. Not necessarily horror movies, but like pop culture things and and mainstream films like Fast and Furious and, and a McDonald's commercial with a dribbling basketball. So um, I think this movie has two standouts in it and one of them is posted on the front cover. They would be David Cross, who's not pictured here, and Chris Elliott, <clears throat> who I think really steals the movie. He's the butler of the house. He has the deformed hand and there's you know, lots of lines uh, about his strong hand and it's, it's very outrageous, but it's also very funny at the same time. <clears throat> and brings those two characters bring a lot of laughs, especially when they interact with each other. So this is uh, a three out of five for me. I enjoyed this a bit more than Scary Movie, which is crazy because I remember liking Scary Movie a bit more. But I think this movie holds up a little better. Um, so I give this a three out of five. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. The voice is starting to go. I recorded, this is video number four today, and I recorded three on Friday. So, <clears throat> so I apologize for doing that right in the microphone. Next up was a first time watch for me, and it is Will Smith in Seven Pounds. Uh, this has been on my to watch list for quite a while, back to when I worked at Blockbuster and this was out. Um, the story offers a lot of twists and turns, but I want to mention that I predicted the big twist in this film quite early on. I kind of called what would happen, and Bridget didn't say anything, but I ended up being right. Um, for the most part, but I still enjoyed the film quite a bit and enjoyed the journey. Um, Will Smith was quite good as the lead in this film. <clears throat> His character is suffering a lot in this film, and you're not quite sure why or how, what, what exactly it is. And as the movie unwinds, you find out more about his character's background, and the movie pulls the heartstrings, and um, Rosario Dawson and him form a bit of a relationship, if you will. And their story together is definitely the highlight of the movie. I actually, like I said, I quite enjoyed this movie. Um, thought it was very well done. And I give it a three and a half out of five. I would recommend Seven Pounds if you have not seen it. But it is not a light watch. It is pretty heavy. Um, next up is a movie that Bridget bought recently uh, that she wanted me to check out. <clears throat> one she liked when she was younger. And that is The Power of One. Um... So it's about PK, who's played um, by multiple people, because it starts as him, him as a baby, up until him as a like a uh, probably like sixteen to eighteen year old kid. So he's played by Stephen Dorff when he's older. Um, so he's an English South African boy who's born right around the time of World War II, and he's born and raised under. Apartheid, I believe is how you pronounce it. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, I'm reading my notes here. This way I can kind of give you guys the background of the movie, uh, which was a system of inst institutionalized racial segregation that existed in South Africa um, basically from 1948 all the way through to the early 90s. And this movie was made in like 92. So it was still going on when this movie came out. Um, it shows PK's childhood, uh, his experiences with loss. Um, PK lives a very tough life. He he dealt with a lot of traumatic things, and um, it shows his traumatic experience at boarding school, where he's the only English boy, and he's surrounded by a bunch of Germans. Uh, he then lives at a jail and befriends. Um, Morgan Freeman's character, a, I don't want to say younger Morgan Freeman, but Morgan Freeman some 28 years ago, uh, who plays Gil Pete, um, and he trains PK to box when he's a young kid. And uh, the movie is a great story as a whole. It's a very good story. 
but there's definitely parts of this movie that drug for me. Um, the runtime's two hours and seven minutes, and it's a bit slow in parts. Um, you're really rooting for PK's character throughout. He deals with some awful life experiences, um, some awful losses in his life, and you're rooting for his character. Like I said, it just, it takes a while to get there with certain things, but uh, the movie was very well done. Even, even though I didn't love it, I would highly recommend this one. Um, I personally give it a two and a half out of five. If they trimmed it or changed up the pace a little, it would probably be like a three and a half or a four for me. It just drugged too much for me personally. So I'm into two and a half out of five on The Power of One. Next up is a title that was sent over to me from... I totally just blanked. Paramount? DreamWorks. DreamWorks Paramount. Yes, DreamWorks, which is Paramount. No, it's Universal. I feel like a stooge. It was a DreamWorks movie, and I knew that. From Universal, and it is Trolls World Tour. Um, this was sent over for me to review. I did an unboxing on the channel, which a lot of you guys watched. I talked about the bonus features, which a lot of people seem to be interested in. So I'll start off by saying that I was not the biggest fan of 2016's Trolls when it came out. <clears throat> I did like the animation in the film as well as the music. And um, this movie has a fun idea where there's different troll villages and each village has its own kind of music. There's the pop music, there's, there's country music, there's classical, there's hard rock. And... Um, the movie is about Queen Barb, who is voiced by Rachel Bloom, and uh, she's the queen of hard rock, and she wants to steal each other kingdom's strings to make hard rock the music of all the trolls. So <clears throat> the movie feels like it's going in a lot of different directions, um, but when it focuses on what it wants to do, it's a very fun watch. Obviously, I am not the target audience for Trolls World Tour. But it was a fun watch. I enjoyed this one more than the original one, personally. Um, the music's very well done, once again, in this movie. And uh, the film offers some laughs for adults. Uh, some adult jokes that would go right over kids' heads. Also some humor for the kids. And I, uh, I can definitely see young kids really liking this. RJ enjoyed it, but like, I think from the ages of like 3 to 6, 3 to 7, really, really would love this movie. And can see it being on repeat in uh, in quite a few households. So I give this a 3 out of 5. Like I said, it is a fun watch. And down below, I will put a, um, a link to the unboxing video I did. Where I talk about the movie more in depth. And have links where you can buy it. So thank you to Universal Home Entertainment for sending this over for me to review. It is much appreciated. Next up, we're going to talk about a movie we watched on Amazon Prime. And that is My Spy, which stars Dave Bautista. Uh, the movie has been a victim of multiple pushbacks. It was supposed to come out like when Stuber came out, but they didn't want the two movies coming out too close together, so they pushed it back. It got pushed back again, and then it was supposed to come out, I believe, in April. And we went into lockdown, and the movie just got sold to Amazon, and they released it. Of course, Amazon waited till. July, the end of June to release it, which seemed a bit weird. I guess it was the end of June since I watched the first week of July. Um, so it came out and we checked it out with RJ. We wanted to watch it with RJ. And the movie is very predictable, in my opinion. Um, I, I could have kind of laid out how the movie was going to go based on the trailers when it initially came out. But that's okay because the movie offers laughs. Uh, it offers a fun story. Kristen Shaw is my highlight of this movie. She does the voice of Louise on Bob's Burgers. Second Louise mentioned in the episode. So um, Dave Bautista and Chloe Coleman, who plays the young girl, uh, the lead, one of the leads in the movie, they had very good chemistry together. They were fun to watch together. And like I said, Kristen Shaw had a lot of great one-liners, but... Ken Jeong's in the movie for a little bit and feels unnecessary why he was cast in the role that he's in. I was waiting for some payoff with his character, but it never really got there and just seemed like a stretch for him. Um, 
the movie was a nice afternoon watch with the family, but not something I would necessarily buy when it comes out, if it comes out on physical media. It probably won't come out on physical media because it's an Amazon Prime movie. And if you guys know, like when Amazon releases stuff, they usually don't put out physical releases. Look at stuff like Late Night. Um, I'm going to blank now. Late Night. Britney Runs a Marathon, Honey Boy, none of that has come out on physical media. You can only watch it on Amazon Prime. So I give it a two and a half out of five. Once again, nothing I would rush out and watch, but a fun family watch. It's rated PG-13, so there's some language, but RJ enjoyed it, um, and it, it was very watchable. Uh, next up was a first-time watch for me. It is my girlfriend's favorite Studio Ghibli movie, so... We added it to the hat and it's one I wanted to check out. And my experience with Studio Ghibli outside of this movie is we watched Spirited Away. Other than that, I've not watched any other, um, any other Studio Ghibli movies. And this is Howl's Moving Castle. This being the sweet Shout Factory steelbook that I got for Bridget. And uh, I actually enjoyed this movie quite a bit. Um, Bridget was kind of surprised by how much I enjoyed it. I actually liked this more than Spirited Away, which I also enjoyed, but um, this was a really entertaining watch, and the third act gets a bit bizarre. I mean, the whole movie is a bit bizarre, but it was it was easily to watch for me. Like, I, I don't know why I'm so in the mindset that I'm not going to like this stuff. I know that now that they're voiced over by, you know, English characters, um, people like Christian Bale, uh, Josh Hutcherson, Billy Crystal is really funny in this movie as well. And uh, he really stole the movie for me, Billy Crystal's character. But I really enjoyed this movie. And like I said, it's very fantastical. The third act's a bit bizarre. But overall, I really enjoyed How's Moving Castle. I give it a four out of five. And uh, I guess I'm going to continue to check out Studio Ghibli movies for sure. And then last but not least, a movie a lot of people were excited. I was finally watching. And that is... The Outsiders, this being the complete journal version which we watched. Um, so I believe this is the extended version. It's about 25 minutes longer and there is some stuff that's different with it. I went and read all about the differences uh, between the original and this version. And I'm actually kind of glad I watched this version because it seems like it gives you a lot more to work with with the characters in the movie. Um, and this is a first time watch for me. This movie is from 1983. The cast in this movie is insane. You have Swayze, sorry, Patrick Swayze, Matt Dillon, Rob Lowe, uh, T C. Thomas Howe, Ralph Macchio, Emilio Estevez, Leif Garrett, Diane Lane, Tom Cruise. <coughs> Excuse me again, guys, sorry. And um, this is a story that a lot of kids read back in like middle school and high school. I never read the book. Um, but it takes place in the mid sixties and it's about a gang called the greasers. And, uh, so it's funny out of all those, you know, names I mentioned, probably the two smallest names career wise are C. Thomas Howe, who plays the lead in the film, Pony Boy and Ralph Macchio, who yes, he went on to become the karate kid. But outside of this and the Karate Kid, Ralph Macchio's career wasn't as great as somebody like Matt Dillon, Tom Cruise, Emilio Estevez, Patrick Swayze, uh, Diane Lane, Rob Lowe. So this was a fantastic coming of age film. Uh, I really, really, really loved it. Um, mad at myself for not watching something like this sooner, but it happens, you know? Like I, I can only watch so many movies, uh, but the movie's well done. I have, slight issues with this movie and from what I've read it's actually the complete novel uh, that's the issue there's parts of the movie where the music is way too loud like it almost drowns out the dialogue but that was done on purpose in the complete novel edition I don't know why but all in all outside of that complaint this was a fantastic watch I give The Outsiders a 4 out of 5 and highly recommend it guys so that is it for this review video. Thank you guys for watching. As always, be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed. Also, be sure to hit the bell notification so you guys know when new videos drop from me. And if you don't already, please subscribe to the channel. It's much appreciated. 
As of today, July 26th, we are nine subscribers short of 2,300. So hopefully by the time this video drops or after this video, you guys get me over that hump and we try to hit the year end goal. My year end goals are 2,500 subscribers for the channel. I also want to be at a thousand followers on Instagram. So if you don't follow me on Instagram down in the links below in the description box, not only can you find links to my Instagram, which I'm very active on, you can find links to Facebook, Twitter, um, myletterbox.com where I rate and review all the movies I watch, my blu-ray.com profile, my eBay page, Amazon wishlist, email address, and P.O. Box can all be found down below. So that's it guys. I need to have a drink of water and stop talking for a few hours because I'm starting to get hoarse. And uh, thank you guys for watching. As always, until next time. And just wait for it, it's coming. Scared myself when I did it. Who's down to movie?